welcome to today's design with pam today we're going to be designing this landing page for a digital shape 3d company i'm also going to be showing you how to achieve this simple animation right in figma so let's get right into it right, so the first thing we're going to do is to take our frame from here go and choose desktop so let's just title it as a 3d 3d digital shape shape landing page okay so i'm going to change the color of this page but before i do that let me create this there's some if you look at this design in it we have some lines more like grid lines that has been that i used to achieve this kind of design so i'm going to go ahead and click on l on my keyboard then i'm going to draw a line but when you're drawing this line make sure you hold on to your shift key so that you can get a perfect line so for this line i'm going to be using a color of the color i'm going to be using is 37 37 37 all right it's somewhat close to brown somewhat close to the color i used for the for the board but some kind of a different shade okay so i am going to go ahead and duplicate this i'm going to make it into six places so i'm going to hold on to my shift key and select all of it and create an auto layout by clicking shift a so while i've done that i'm going to go click on command to select one and select one of the lines then i'm going to go and click command c command v, v which is same as control c control v then i'm going to keep pasting till i get up to six lines two four six okay there are seven lines then i'm going to increase the spacing between each of this line to a two 11 okay so i'm going to try to align this in the middle now so let's go ahead and add another line here but before we continue again let's add our layout grid okay so i already have a style here a style okay so let's use this one right so let me add deactivate my style so you can check the grid lines i'm using and you can replicate it i'm only i'm already showing you the settings so please replicate it on your own design all right so the next thing i'm going to do is i am going to close my grid line so that i'll see what i'm doing close the eye of my grid line then i'm going to click on l on the keyboard but before i do that right i want to deactivate the auto layout i kept here so i'm going to click on on group right right click on my mouse and click select on group so i am going to click on l on my keyboard and i'm going to hold on to shift and i'm going to draw another line so let's give this line i think this is fine then i'm going to check check use the same color that i used here I'm going to go ahead and duplicate this line select the both of them create an auto layout then go ahead hold on to command or or control and select one of the lines click on command c command b and paste it up to let's paste it up to six two four six we have seven let's make it of seven but let's give it a spacing of 146 146 and let's center it and create a, a good vertical alignment here i think i am good now so i'm going to put on my grid lines and take this come to this color fill take my color picker and choose the color that i have here now you can't see the lines but it is there just like we have it here on the design on this preview so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to create this menu section here navigation section so I'm going to click on F on my keyboard. I'm going to set the frame to be a 1264 for the width. And I'm going to try to add a few color so that we can see what we're doing for starters. So I'm trying to position it at the middle. Let me just use my center alignment. And bring it down to where 
all right so the spacing between the this is my frame with the top of the screen is 56 which is what i want and that is what i set my grid line to be okay so uh i'm going to give this a corner radius of let's give it a 10 corner radius then for the stroke i am going to give it a different color um let's give it this color c c e c8 bf right so let's hide the fill color so we can see the grid lines the lines the stroke that we added to the frame so the next thing we're going to do is to click on t on the keyboard All right before we do that let's go and group our lines so that it doesn't fall apart so this one that i created into a frame i don't want it to be a frame because if it's a frame now Anything I put in it, we just stack up to it and just be, um, it's not going to be well, okay. So I'm going to ungroup it. While all is still selected, I'm going to right click and group selection. So I'm going to go ahead and select the other grid lines. The ones that are vertical. I'm going to select all of it. And I'm going to right click and group my selection here. Group it. So you can see that our board now is looking very fine. So I'm going to click on T on my keyboard and I'm going to start typing the items in the menu section. And I'm going to say home page. See this font I'm using? It's actually beautiful. I love this font. So I'm going to click on Shift A and create an auto layout in it. So this auto layout now, what I'm going to be using is a font. I use a font 16, which is fine. Then for these sections here, I left it as 10. The horizontal padding is 10. The other padding is also 10. But sometimes I will also advise you when you're doing your horizontal padding, let's say you use a, let's use a 12. For this one, let's give it an 8. This is better. All right. So we're also going to add a stroke to this, just like we did to the this one. Let's just select the color that we have here go and change our stroke color and round the corners of our let's give it a rounded corner of four which is perfect so i'm going to create this into how many options we have four items here one two three four four items i'm going to create an auto layout double click on one and click on ctrl v ctrl c ctrl v and the spacing between it, I want it to be a 24, which is fine. Let it start within this line. All right. So the item we have here, we call it collections. So if you use an auto layout, these frames are going to adjust according to the test that we have in it. Customization. And the last one is pricing. All right, so I'm going to duplicate one of this one here. I'm just holding on to my alt but my option key, and I am using my mouse to drag it. So the call to action here is called place order. Just type place order. I'm just going to give it a fill. I'm just going to go ahead and give the frame a fill. So the fill I'm using is this color, which is fine. So I'm going to select, click on this first frame, select the sounds, and then hit, give it an auto layout, shift A. Right, so let's not forget our logo. This is my logo here. I'm going to be bringing it here. I just paste it somewhere here. All right. I think we're good. The next test we have here is called Unleash Your Creativity with Digital Shapes for 3D Design. So let's change the font. The font I actually used here is this font. For my title, I use this font, this one. And then I increase the font to, let's say, it's 64 for starters. Then I'm going to make the adjustments here. All right, let's go ahead and change the and correct our shape. So once you right click on anything that Figma 
it's pointing out that you didn't type very well once you right click on it you can see the correct so let's increase the font a bit to 72 so i'm going to click t i'm going to go and select the subtext that we have here all right i'm going to hit t on my keyboard and i'm going to drag a little frame here and text frame i'm going to leave it like this but just so i know what i'm doing i'm going to go back and put on the grid lines here so let's go back and give it the same font that we used no this is not looking okay so i'm going to use this font for the body so i'm going to select the both of them and create an auto layout give the spacing a 33 a 34 is great so the spacing between this up part let's work with 80 so i'm working 80. so i'm going to take this and duplicate and add it here so what i'm trying to achieve with this i don't want it to be like the conventional you have text here but you can also add one or two tests here just to you know create some form of distraction if, if, if i can use that word right so maybe it could be an important test you put here because that form of distraction leaves users wondering oh what is there why is it out of place or why is it but it's not out of place it's still within my grid line it's still very okay but it's not like it's not following the same trend here where you see my test here there's another test here so users can be prompted to go to that test so the next thing i'm going to do is to let's take one of these frames here place it here and our call to action here says start designing today let's type start designing today so what i'm going to do to make it okay as a call to action button i'm going to change the color to this right but i'm going to also go ahead and increase the horizontal padding that i have going on there let me give it a 24 and i want to increase this to a 12. so i'm going to select with the the cut action button with this one here and i'm going to create an auto layout so the spacing between the two i can leave it as let's give it a 42. i think we're getting there You can also increase this vertical padding to a 16. All right. So what's the next thing that we have? The next thing that we have here are these images here, these shapes here. All right, so this is where I got the shapes from, from this website, shapefist.com. So you can go and explore. All right, so I got the shapes here. I'm just going to copy the shapes as I have it here. And I'm going to try to send it back of this test here. So let's create this thing going on here. It's just a simple, let's type a name of a brand, Control T. Uh, type, click on T on your keyboard and type robot and type a name. Maybe the brand's name. Then I'm going to increase the font to, let's say, a 24. Then I'm going to right-click and go to Plugins. And I'm going to find Act Bend Your Style. So if you don't see it, if you don't have it saved, you can go to Manage Plugins and type the font, the plugin. So what I'm going to do is, once it comes up, I'm going to bend it a bit, a bit, okay. So... All right, so the trial has ended. <laughs> you can use it for, for trials, but you can then, if you've not used it before, you can use it for some time, maybe two to three times. Then you can subscribe. You can you pay just $2 per month. But for the purpose of this tutorial, maybe later. All right, so I'm just going to go and copy the, the one I have here. Another thing I did was to bring in the logo here. So go to absolute position, just add the logo with it. 
so i'm going to try to select the both of them and group them so that they can be well let's ungroup these two shapes here because i want to position them better let's position them here all right so the next thing we're going to do is to click create the shapes we have here just click f on your keyboard so let's draw draw a shape there are four shapes here so do let's give it a width of 277 let's also fill the color to white for the height we can leave it at let's say 356 right so let's take one of these shapes here and chuck it in here so where's the frame i'll make sure i'll come here and make sure i'll drag this sh shape into the frame itself so that it can it can then fill it so i'm going to duplicate this it into four just hold on to your alt your option key select all of it create an auto layout give the spacing of let's see let's give the spacing the spacing is too much let's give the spacing of 48 let's center it then let's go ahead and select each individual frame because i want to give it a corner radius of eight all right so this is what our design looks like this is it but the next thing we're going to do is we're going for us to create the animation that you see you saw going on what to do is first of all duplicate the, the frame once you do that you want to create the first date so i'm going to shift this towards this place towards the edge so it's going to be as if it's coming to meet the other shape right i'm going to shift this one just a little bit i don't want it to end that the other frame right so this one too i'm going to click on the image in it just bring it a little down click on the image bring it down because i want it to and um, behave as if it's just pulling up you know and then i'm going to pull this one down a bit too all right so it's just a simple prototype and we're going to and i'm going to click on this first frame go to prototype I'm going to select it, connect to the next one and choose after delay. I'm going to set it to um, smart animates is out. And then I'm going to click on the other frame and then return the favor after delay. Smart animate is out. And then let's play it and see. It's as simple as that.